Yeah, what's good, the Warriors? We in there. I'm hyped. We're talking about Final Fantasy 15. I can't believe it. That game looks so ridiculously beautiful. I'm done. I'm done. Let's get straight into it. The main theme that we're going to be talking about this, the money and the behemoth isn't free. Oh shit, let's do this bit. First of all, what did we learn? We learned that they're putting a lot of time and money and effort and resources into the team. The people that are in your party, how they interact with you, what they do for you, how they act in battle, in story, and how you feel towards them. So you feel more of an affinity towards them. Now this has always existed in Final Fantasy, but we have more created it for ourselves. Example. My favourite character in Final Fantasy X was Lulu. I love that character. Final Fantasy VIII, Zell. That was my boy. Zell. Love him. Everyone has got their character in Final Fantasy that they gravitate to. You know, you may love um, Kane or Vincent Valentine or Terra, Vivi. Any of those kind of characters in the Final Fantasy series. Everyone has got somebody that they really, really like. Some characters just do something in story, or you like their look, or you like their magic, or you like what they do in battle. As of recently in Final Fantasy, um, like since Final Fantasy X, they've been kind of trying to give characters more of their individuality in battle. And this has been coming across like in Final Fantasy, say you have in Final Fantasy X, you had Lulu, Oren, Riku and Tidus. And Tidus attacks an enemy, Riku is about to attack an enemy, and then Tidus, as he's gone to attack and he's coming back, he runs into Riku. Riku might fall over and say ow and Titus will be like sorry and she'll be like it's okay just careful next time and they will say that in battle this happens in Final Fantasy 10 so there was hints of them trying it they emphasized it a little bit more on Final Fantasy 13 you know but this was more to do it was situational like if an enemy had a certain amount of health like 100% uh, 75% 50% 25% 5 or 3% life certain characters would respond in a way that suited their character like I could say Snow if a character got knocked down and it's them, they got picked up, Snow would be like, be careful, nobody dies today, you know, or I'll protect you. So there were certain things that made you feel for the characters when they responded in a certain situation, which was not scripted. It felt like it was abstract, it just happened. So you kind of feel like the character's... It's a, comp it's a video game character, but you felt like the character was alive, you know. And I know these kind of things, because if you know me, if you watch any of my videos, you know how I feel about Tay, Dante. The boy. You know, we all have affinities that we see certain characters in films or in movies that we like. And the more you like something, the more you have accustomed to enjoy it. Like when you play a fighting game, you play a character that you really like, that attracts you to that character. You like their fighting style, you like their look, you like their moves. And it makes you play better with that character. Same thing in a film or anything. When you like a character, you enjoy the film more because you enjoy seeing more of the character. If you watch a film, a TV program called Dexter, you love a Dexter. Because you love the show because of the character. Even when the show has a really bad episode, just the fact that Dexter's in it makes it better. This is the game that is emphasizing on that point even more. And I love it. And it's a road trip. And you know, Final Fantasy is an epic adventure anyway. I like the fact that it's only going to have four people Promptu, Ignis, Gladilos, and Noctis. Those are the characters. We're going to call them Iddy, Glad, and Promptu. And knock. Tuss. So, <laughs> those are the characters that's going to be in your team. And this has been there before because if you play Final Fantasy VIII, they had teams, and um, your whole team was actually on the world map. So they've done it before, but this one's the character are more unique. They move differently. They have different characteristics. They will say stuff. There's the but they take a, there's like a buddy request system. So if there's like a certain item on the world map that you don't see, but one of your teammates sees it, they'll run to it and then they'll call you over to it. Then you pick it up. You be like, cool. If there's like a, a special quest, when your team run over to it, they'll call you over and they'll be like, yo, yo, check this out, man. They do it in their own unique way, and that makes you feel something more for the characters and more for the game. And there was another thing that they showed because you can see that the characters have got their kind of like classes system because you can see like um, Promptu, he's more of a gunner like the archer type who shoots from afar who can like really shoot and move and everything like that but he's got like status att attacks attached to his bullets you know a bit like um Ivelin in Final Fantasy 8 then you have like Ignis who's more of a he's more like a quick can go 
in, can go out, very, very quick attacks, and he's a healer. Then you have um, Gladiolus. He's like the attacker with the big HP and the defensive kind of character. And obviously you've got the main character who is everything. He's the perfect balance and he can do summons. That was a mistake I made in one of my videos. My other video with Final Fantasy 15, I said I wasn't too sure if Noctis had summons or he had any summons. He does have summons, but I didn't know that because I didn't read the interview in which the director said that he had it because the interview was on Polygon. Now if you know anything about Polygon, you know why I haven't read any interview or don't read anything to do with what's on Polygon. I don't like that propaganda. It's politics. I'm not going to go into it. But that's why. I'm sorry. So yes, there are going to be summons in the game. Um, that was another thing that they showed. They showed outposts and towns and caravans. And that was very, very important. And the fact that you can cook. Because they have shown... They, we've seen cooking in RPGs before. If you played um, Tales of Vesperia, they had the cook. You find recipes. You find the cook. He was hidden in certain stages. If you took your recipe and you could cook it, give you a certain amount of HP back. This is a little bit different. Because you can go to Wiz's Chocobo Outpost, which look absolutely beautiful. I love that. I could not believe when I saw that outpost. You buy recipes from his place. And then once you're in your camp or tent, and they advise you to, at night time, it's advised to sleep at night time. And don't try to fight enemies at night time. Because enemies are very, very dangerous. A.K.A. the behemoth. Whatever. At the beginning of the game, of course, you're not strong enough to. But let's put one thing into perspective. The behemoth is my bitch. He's always been my bitch since Final Fantasy VIII. It's just that in the beginning of the game, you cannot deal with someone as lethal, or monster as lethal as that. Final Fantasy XIII on Disc 4, when you first get to Disc 4, the Wildlands, you cannot deal with behemoth. I don't care who you are. Once you level up in the Wildlands and you become max level, he is a bitch. You can bust him. He's free. This is what this is. So I respect the fact that you can't deal with him at the beginning of the game. You sort of talk about outposts. You buy ingredients. Then you eat at camp. Once you eat at the camp, you get certain buffs like HP, different types of uh, food, which gives you buffs during battle in the world. Some ingredients give you um, gain more experience. You get more defense. You get more attack power. Other ones, you get immunity. There's certain like things that you get throughout the, the world, like the food, and Ignis cooks it for you. But then there's another aspect of it, where there's caravans. If you go into caravans, which is totally different to camps and in the inns, caravans, you get experience multipliers. So say you've got like a thousand HP, and that's what you're going to get through um, after you sleep, because experience points and ability points, they get allocated to you during you during sleep time but in caravans you just get experience points and you get a multiplier but you have to pay for it so you get more experience points so say you've got a thousand when you go to the um this um caravan you get times three of the thousand experience points so you get three thousand experience points but you have to pay for it which i thought was really really cool i liked it i didn't find any really problem with it stuff like that you also have job um jobs in the game in the outpost you come across um job quest boards which obviously you know as i said jagger's dogma there's some very similar things i know what this is like say you have there'll be a job where somebody will post a job saying we have a dragon or a wyvern that is attacking our village we need you to kill this wyvern and protect us you take up the job you kill the wyvern you get a reward Stuff like that is throughout the game. It's really, really exciting. You can see there's going to be so many things in the game that regard that, you know. And they showed a lot of things with the defensive system and the abilities and the weapons. Because a lot of the weapons have their own abilities, techniques, passive abilities and status elements or buffs. Now, you know you've got four corresponding attacks, right? Then your weapon changes for each attack. You can actually have one weapon attached to them. So you can slash all the time using one weapon. But it won't benefit you to do that. Because when you do that. You don't actually get the massive abilities. Or advantages that you get from having multiple weapons. So it's more advantageous to have different weapons. Say you have a weapon. Like say you have the big sword. The big sword has got a counter. And you put it as your fourth attack. right? But it's got a counter. To activate the counter. You need to dodge and then attack. Once you have an enemy that attacks you and you hold the defend button and you dodge, then you press the attack button immediately after, you will do counter immediately and not use any MP, then you can start using your normal attack strings, 
which is really exciting. It shows the mechanics of the system is evolving. I'm hype about it. They also showed um, the chocobos in it. The chocobos look so good and cool. I loved it. I was in awe when I saw that. You know, they showed like um, a system where also of, of, of course you can buy like items food accessories in which chocolate right which i thought it was really really cool i couldn't believe it ways to dodge and attack in battle for example when you hold the defend button and someone attacks you obviously you keep on dodging right but use a lot of mp if you perfectly the second the attack's about to hit you then you press the dodge button you evade so it's as the attack is coming down you press the do defend button and then you dodge you use less mp Still use MP, but less. But then there's another one where the enemy is about to attack you, and then you press the defend button, and then you press the attack button. As the attack is on, is about to hit you, then you do a parry, and then you get like a super counter. If you've got your teammates with you nearby, once you do that, defend, and then pushes them counter, they will do a certain attack, and then you come and hit them. So yeah, they showed a lot of things with that, and I'm excited about it. Like. You know, I'm very happy about it. I'm excited. I'm loving what I'm seeing with the cats, with the team system, with the world map, with the outposts, with the teams, with the way the system is being done, with the magic, how you've got like every weapon has got their own certain amount of abilities and you can cycle for, like, say you, the abilities have got dragon lance, so or jump. You can cycle through the abilities. If you, I think it was triangle on the PlayStation, which would probably be Y on the Xbox. You cycle through the abilities that you have on each weapon and then you can use them. I'm hype. That's all I really wanted to say about that, my little breakdown. So I hope you tune in for my next video. And till next time, stay safe. And I love you guys, man. Let's do this. Let's keep getting stronger. Take it easy.